I'd like to, uh, for us to give a, a warm welcome to uh, Dr. Trinito from Italy. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to present uh, this uh, work. Um, I, we, uh, now my, I just as, uh, two years ago I set up my lab and I am grateful to the KDA for the support that you have uh, given me for trusting me. Uh, that was very important, especially at the beginning when you set up uh, your, uh, your lab. Uh, we have a lot of uh, projects uh, running uh, on SBMA. Uh, today, I would like to mention about uh, the IGF project uh, because uh, the results that uh, Carlo has obtained in mice uh, really are promising. And so I want to remind you uh, what we have done together with Isabella when I was in uh, Kurt's uh, lab. Um, but if you want to discuss also about other stuff that is going on in the lab, I'm here. I, I will be happy. So um, today I will speak about uh, um, uh, uh, androgen receptor. Uh, okay. Ah, so um, about uh, a process that we know as a phosphorylation is actually a modification. We have so uh, um, what happens in the cells. Uh, uh, when a signal, for example, comes from outside or even from the inside the cell, is that proteins are modified. And one of these modifications is actually addition of a, a, a little molecule, and we, 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 we call this process phosphorylation. And phosphorylation is very fast, and, but um, may have a remarkable effect, may change protein function. Uh, or, uh, as I will show you, response to uh, hormones. Um, so, uh, basically, I want to uh, just uh, uh, briefly mention what happens with uh, uh, the insulin-like growth factor 1, with IGF-1. Now, uh, I'm, I believe uh, uh, most of you are familiar with uh, IGF. So, IGF binds to its receptor on the cell su surface, and activate a signaling pathway, activate several proteins like a cascade, and these are kinases, proteins that add those phospho groups. Um, and, and the protein that is really important for our story is AKT. Now, uh, we were able to put androgen receptor um, downstream as a substrate of AKT, and what we have shown is that um, so this uh, phospho group uh, can be uh, added to uh, specific residues, uh, which are known as S serines, and androgen receptor has two of those serines, um, which uh, um, are recognized for some reasons by uh, AKT, by these kinds. So basically, if you uh, treat cells with IGF-1, you are able to activate AKT, which in turn uh, phosphorylates, modifies androgen receptor. And what does this mean? So the first thing, okay, we have heard before that uh, you have uh, 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 androgen receptor can be uh, inactive in the cytosol, and uh, testosterone binding leads to nuclear translocation. And we know from uh, even uh, the previous talk that, uh, the that nuclear translocation is toxic. Um, so, and, and, and this is a cell expressing androgen receptor, poly-Q, and you see uh, here uh, that it's diffused in, in, in the cytosol, and this, is, this empty space is the nucleus. Uh, when we give a testosterone, you see actually something different, so all the androgen receptor is in the uh, nucleus. Uh, but then we generated an androgen receptor uh, with the, this modification of the series that I previously uh, showed you. So it's like uh, um, uh, an androgen receptor that is uh, modified by AKT at these uh, uh, sites. And what we found is that, okay, then we uh, expressed that these, uh, we, we, we can say, we can call it uh, phosphomimetic androgen receptor and we uh, expressed it in cells, uh, we treated the cells with testosterone and compare this image to this, uh, you see the difference. 
here androgen receptor stays in the cytosol, which means that this androgen receptor was not responding to androgens, was not responding to hormones. So, in other words, we found uh, a modification that was preventing nuclear translocation, which is toxic. Uh, we have several other experiments that we have done. This is just to show probably the most important one. We, uh, we, we tested whether this uh, phosphodimetic androgen receptor was able to bind the testosterone. And what we found is that uh, um, uh, this uh, uh, phosphodimetic androgen receptor, several variants we generated, those androgen receptors were not able to bind to testosterone. All you know that testosterone binding is critical for the disease, and so this modification seem to be quite important from a therapeutic point of view. Um, so, to test whether this uh, pathway, the IGF AKT pathway signaling, was uh, uh, important, uh, what we did at that time was to um, uh, test this idea in mouse, and uh, we used the uh, mice generated by Gan Sogwe in Japan, uh, we can, and you see a picture of these mice here. Um, that, and so we crossed these mice with mice that look like uh, Mickey Mouse, because they overexpress uh, IGF-1 in the skeletal muscle. So they, you can recognize actually these mice, because they have uh, um, larger muscles and it, it's visible the effect of this uh, IGF-1. So I want to emphasize that in this experiment uh, we overexpress the IGF in the skeletal muscle. Okay? And what we got actually is this. Uh, this is just a summary of the very long research uh, carried out uh, uh, with uh, Isabella. Um, so this is a double, uh, a mouse, an SDMA mouse that overexpress IGF-1. So if you compare this guy to this guy, you can see that this looks much better. Um, I can say that uh, this looks uh, uh, almost like a wild-type mouse, uh, a normal mouse, um, and is uh, healthier than its uh, um, uh, uh, sibling here. Um, this is just to show you the survival curve. We had a, a remarkable effect on survival. These guys uh, overexpressing IGF-1 were living longer, and they were also uh, they, they showed improvement in uh, motor dysfunction. So uh, we were quite happy about these results. So now uh, this is just a summary to, to, to show that we uh, put an androgen receptor. Um, uh, downstream of AKT, and we show that uh, AKT can modify androgen receptor, and this uh, blocks binding to testosterone. Now, one, uh, now Carlo will uh, tell me um, you more about uh, uh, what was the next step after this work. I want just to mention um, that now. So, um, I, I, I told you before that these mice were overexpressing IGF-1 in the skeletal muscle. And it turns out that uh, IG, the IGF AKT signaling, this signaling pathway, is really important for skeletal muscle uh, because I, AKT activates a lot of uh, um, proteins, uh, factors, and, uh, um, and, and, and starts signaling, starts to communicate some communications uh, that ends up uh, with uh, uh, new protein synthesis. Uh, uh, and this uh, uh, leads to um, um, uh, 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 growth of muscle, and but and and, and AKT can inhibit signaling pathways that lead to muscle atrophy. So we are now investigating uh, what is the status of this signaling pathway in the SBMA muscle. Uh, we are doing this in the knocking mice generated by Andy, um, and we hope also to uh, confirm some results uh, uh, in a muscle biopsies uh, from patients. Um, and, and the last thing I want to mention is that uh, from the um, from 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 the, uh, the work that I described before, uh, it, um, 
seems that, uh, and, and also from the work of other groups, uh, um, it seems that the skeletal muscle um, are, is really important for toxicity. So that androgen receptor may, be, uh, may exert some toxicity directly to skeletal muscle in addition to spinal cord. And my idea now is now uh, to uh, determine the role of specific cells in the muscle. Uh, now, I don't want to enter too much in detail, but in, in muscle we have uh, cells that are uh, um, known as uh, satellite cells uh, and uh, that ex uh, are really important for muscle homeostasis. Uh, and these cells express a lot of androgen receptor, and we believe uh, that androgen receptor might be uh, toxic uh, um, in muscle because it alters uh, their function. I, I can discuss with you even more in detail later. Uh, about this. Um, so this is just to conclude saying that uh, uh, this modification is important for toxicity, so it protects toxicity. The igf pathway um, we show it by genetic uh, activation of this pathway is, uh, um, is, 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 is uh, therapeutically relevant and uh, we uh, uh, together in collaboration with other groups uh, we um, we investigate the role of skeletal muscle in uh, disease pathog in disease. Um, this is just to mention. Uh, um, uh, uh, now I have a postdoc, Anna Rocky, that is uh, actually working on the characterization of this uh, pathway. Um, two PhD <coughs> students, Clara and Tanya. Um, Sara is working on another pathway in SBMA, and uh, she is here. Uh, Maria is working on another disease, and I have also two undergraduate students just to present to the lab because of uh, uh, your support at the last lot. Uh, of course, uh, the collaborators, I would like to thank uh, Kurt for, uh, because the work started in this lab, and he, he was uh, really important for this. Uh, we have a new collaborator, Janis Soaru, is a neurologist in Padova, and he is actually working on the SBMA patients that we have in Italy. Um, Angelo, that is here, and Antonio, that generated the IGF. So, thank you very much. Hi, I'm